it's hard. It is really hard to actually go through all the biblical principles that uh, God expects us to do to resolve a conflict. And I don't want you to look at it and be like, that's impossible. Because if it was impossible, he would have never asked us to do it. And so I encourage you that, you know, we're still human. And we'll talk a little about that as we go through this process this morning. But we're still fallen. We still make mistakes. We still sin. We still fall short of the glory of God here in this, this time, this earth, this, this lifespan. One day everything will be perfect. But until Jesus returns, we still, uh, we're going to have to live with our, our disabilities, I guess you could say. Uh, but I want to encourage you that no matter how hard it gets in conflict resolution, that you stay grounded in Scripture. That you, you plow through it and you continue to try to resolve it. Because that is really what God wants you to do. He doesn't want to, to guilt you. He just wants to convict you. And the more and more that you try, even if you fail... Like, if you fell one time, don't, don't be that person that goes, never do it again. Get back and continue to try because the more that you live by the principles of God's holy word, the better and more mature you will become in your faith. And it's amazing what God does with obedience. Because in conflict, what we try to do is win it. And God sometimes doesn't ask us to win a conflict. He asks us to be obedient to him. And when you're obedient to the word of God, God wins. And God will use that to achieve his glory. All right, remember, how many of you got your uh, Peacemaker Pledge? You don't have one? We have some extra ones up here. We're actually going to sign those today. As we worked our way through conflict, one of the things that we, uh, we were on a trail, we're on a trail map, and we're headed to the end, and we had four trail markers. The first one was to glorify God. When you step into conflict, the one thing that we want you to ask as a believer, as a member, as a, as a follower of Christ, and, and someone who attends First Christian, we want you to ask, in this conflict, how do I glorify God? Because if you start asking your sub-question at the beginning of a conflict, it's going to change your perspective. It's going to change your attitude. It's going to change your behavior and the way that you go about it. Because it's going to make you stop and you, you realize that when you jump into a conflict out of anger, that's not glorifying God. And so the first trail marker is how to glorify God. The second one is what? Yeah, to get the log out. First, examine yourself. A lot of times we like to go to that person in Matthew 18 where we, we quote this all the time. Is you go and you confront that brother or sister. And if they don't listen, you take somebody else. And if they don't listen, you bring the church. But Jesus actually said in Matthew 7, before you even do that, what I want you to do is look at your self. All right? No conflict. It's very seldom does a conflict is 100% the other person's fault. Right? So we stop and we pause and we look at ourselves. What did I do? How do I create this? What have I done wrong? God, show me my ways. You know, go before God and, and ask that. This, the third one, we talked about it last week, was what? Yeah, going and gently restoring your brother. All right? Gently restoring your brother. And we talked a lot about, a lot of scripture was thrown in there. Hopefully you got your notes as you look through that. And there's a lot of things that we need to do as we go and restore our brother. And, and God just again, again and again tells you to go back and restore it. Go back and work on it. Go back and restore it gently to his presence. And again, this is all based on obedience. Uh, we talk about this, that God doesn't want us to resolve conflict the way of the world. Because if we resolve the way of the world, then they're not going to see Jesus. And so this is why it's so important to go and to restore your brother or sister gently. And then today, it's actually reconciliation. All right? We're going to reconcile. How do we do that? And so we got some notes. We'll pass these out. And again, it's front and back, so it's not two pages. Take one. For those that came in, if you've not been here all week, they are online. If you want to go back and watch it, we have our notes. From the last uh, three weeks, we have a Peacemaker Pledge up here if you need it. Uh, we want to encourage you to sign it. But what, before we get going, we need to step back to last week. I made a mistake. Actually, 
when I said it, I, I thought to myself, this is not right. And so sometimes I can't read my own writing and I type the wrong words or sometimes I just type wrong words. Uh, remember the questions that we asked? We had four questions. You know, when we looked at it, is this an offense that's worthy to confront or to overlook? Remember that? Four questions that we had? We had, is the offense seriously dishonoring God? Has it permanently damaged your relationship? Is it seriously hurting other people? Do you answer yes to one of these questions? You need to you need to go and confront that person, all right? If they're if they're all no, then you don't. The last one, is it seriously hurting? I told you the offender himself. It's actually offending. All right? Oh, it's this. Oh yeah, it's the offender, not the offendee. So again, I messed up again. We got the R on it. Yeah, we talked about it. this. This should be an R, all right? So you look at it and you go, really? Yeah. That's how much God wants you. To, even if so, if you look at it and somebody's offending you and it's actually going to hurt them, God still wants you to go and confront that person. Because it's God's whole plan is all about restoring, all right. And so it's a big step, and it takes maturity for us to get to this point, all right. So I, I just wanted to correct that. Actually, when we when we had it like that up here, I was like, that's not right, because we already covered that. <laughs> to be honest with the other questions, but anyway. So let's go on. Be prepared. Here we go. We're, we're, what are we going to do when the trail gets rough? All right. What are we going to do when the trail gets rough? You've been hiking on a trail before, it gets, you know, whether it's the incline, the elevation, rocky, whatever it might be, what are you going to do? Are you going to turn around and go back, or are you going to press on? Because you know at the end of the trail is this beautiful waterfall. What happens? And so many times when we've been on trails, unless you were on the trail from hell in Colorado with me and my family, we saw nothing beautiful at the end of that trail. And we gave up and went back to the car. We barely made it back to the car. Uh, but most of the time, you're going to get to that end of that trail, and there's going to be something. Maybe it's a view uh, from the top of the mountain, right? But what are you going to do when it gets tough? And just like in like walking a trail or hiking a trail, conflict resolution is not free. It's not easy. Very, <laughs> very seldom in leadership have we ever had to jump into a conflict and look at ourselves and go, "Wow, that was really easy." <laughs> It's tough. And so what, what are you going to do when it gets rough? And so here's the first thing that we're going to do when the trail gets rough. Be prepared for unreasonable people. <laughs> right? Be prepared for unreasonable people. Wherever you, when you, wherever you're responding to conflict, you need to realize that other people may have hardened their hearts and refuse to be reconciled to you. All right, that's just the reality of it is. You're gonna to have to face that. Let me ask you this. What temptation has ever come over to you when you try to reason or try to confront somebody with a hard heart? What, what's your initial fleshly response when somebody doesn't want to, when they're being unreasonable? Anger. Anger, Anger. right? Anger. All right, what else? Sarcasm. Sar sarcasm. Be done with it. Be done with it. We quit, right? I'm done. Yep, I'm done. I'm out. Yep. All right, they don't even want to listen to reason. We just stop. Remember, I was telling you I'm, I'm the president of the HOA. Uh, I did my first official act yesterday. I was only president for like five days now. And my first official act of our homeowners association, we have a, we have, I wanted to kill it, but uh, we have a Facebook page called Castle Creek Homeowners or whatever, and there's no guidelines to it. And so my first official act was pause that. And so we shut down the site for now because there is just so much stupid stuff being said, right? Like trying to <laughs> conflict. And so the first reaction is, I just want to quit. I want to, I want to quit. I want to get out of this. And I'm not, I mean, we're going to bring it back up, but we're going to have some guidelines for our neighborhood. Uh, un unfortunately, there are people that don't want to be reasonable. They're there just to cause problems and stir the pot. So 
there are two ways that you can prepare for this possibility if they're unreasonable. Here's the first one. Remember that God does not measure success in the terms of results, but in terms of faithful obedience from you. And I think this is where we get lost in conflict, because when we're in the middle of conflict, we're looking for results. And as disciples of Jesus, as followers of Christ, we are not called to look for results. We are called to be faithful, obedient to God's word. All right? And so the first thing that you can do is remember that God does not measure in success in terms of results, but in your faithful obedience. He knows that you cannot force other people to act in a certain way. Therefore, he will not hold you responsible for their actions or the ultimate outcome of a conflict as long as you are following his word. As long as you're being a faithful, obedient follower to what he wants to do. As long as you're looking at it going, I'm trying to glorify God. All right? All God expects of you is to obey uh, and to reveal his will as faithfully as possible. Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says this. For if possible, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. What do you think Paul means here when he says, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace? What do you think he's trying to tell you right now? What do you think he's trying to tell the people there in Romans? You can't. But you can only control who? Right. So, he says, as long as it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with people. All right? Trust God. If you do that, no matter how the conflict turns out, you can walk away with a clear conscience before God, knowing that his appraisal is, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Second, here's the second thing we do. When we are uh, prepared to meet unreasonable people, this really helped me after becoming president of the homeowners, all right? Like this study, I'm like, okay. All right. How long do I got to be president for a year? Okay. Can you speed this up? Can you speed up the year or come back tomorrow, Jesus? But in the meantime, here's the second thing we can do with unreasonable people in our neighborhood or in our church or in our family. Resolve that you will not give up on finding a biblical solution. If a dispute is not easily resolved, you may be tempted to say, you know what? I tried. I've tried, I've tried all the biblical principles I know, and they just didn't work. It looks like I'll have to find another way. And you know what the other way is? It's the way the, of the world handles their conflict. And that's not going to fly with God. And so, you know, one of the things that we do is we stay faithful to the Word. All right? We stay faithful to the biblical solution. A follower of Christ should never close the Bible. You should try to resolve a conflict, but do not see the result. If you do not see the results that you desire, you should seek God even more earnestly through prayer, through the study of his word, through the counsel of the church, through other believers. And as you do so, it's essential to keep your focus on Christ and all that he's already done for you. All right. Colossians, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1, if you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on these things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Verse 3, for if you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ who is in your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. All right, some encouragement from Paul. It's also helpful to follow the five principles that we're going to look at here today about overcoming evil, which are outlined in Romans chapter 12. This is one of my favorite chapters of the Bible, especially when we're dealing with conflict. Uh, someone read this slide for me. Read uh, these three verses. All right, don't all jump in at once. Who wants to read it? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Still weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. All right, man, that's a lot to put in just those three verses. Bless those who persecute you. <laughs> what does that look like? What does that look like? 
Somebody give me an example. Give me a real world example of bless those who persecute. How do you do that? Pray for them. Pray for them, alright? Who what else? We had several. Forgive. Forgive them. You know, I, I was actually thinking about this this week. Man, we probably ought to do a class on forgiveness. We're going to talk a little bit about this because it's one of the things that if you don't forgive, it's one of the things that will keep you from being able to follow the, the biblical principles of, of conflict if you do not have forgiveness in your heart. If you're trying to resolve a conflict and you've not forgiven somebody else from another situation or you're living in sin at the whole time that you're trying to resolve a conflict because you haven't dealt with the sin in your own life, God's not going to help you. I mean, it's outlined in Isaiah. We'll look at it here in just a second. All right? Let's move on with this verse. Repay no one for evil for evil, but give thought to what, what to do, what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, here we go again. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceable with all. In verse 19, be loved and never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for his written vengeance is mine. And I will repay, says the Lord. That was one of the hardest things that we did in Texas. We felt like we were mistreated. We felt like the rug was pulled out from under us when we were fired. For pretty much the only reason that we could come up with was that we entertained. We felt like God was done with our mission, our ministry there at this church. And we decided that we would look other places. And we put out a job. We put out some uh, resumes to other churches. And word got back to the senior minister, and he was offended, and he asked why I didn't come to him, and I said, because I was afraid you would fire me. And he goes, I wouldn't have done that, and so two weeks later, he fired me. <laughs> so he waited two weeks before he actually fired me after finding out about it. And we were, we were really, it was, and we had 30 days that we had to stay at this church. And so they got up after the, the week, the Monday, that I, or the Tuesday I was fired. That Sunday they announced that we were leaving. And we had to sign a contract so that we would keep the peace, which I was like, I don't really need to sign this. I'm not going to hurt this church. I promise you. But he made us sign a contract. Did you sign it? Because you were really like anti, I don't want to sign it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I was going to have to break your arm to get you to sign it. Or just forge your name. I don't know. She really didn't want to sign it. But we wound up, I wound up signing it. And we went to church for the next three weeks. And people were like, so where are you going? We don't know. So why did you resign? Well, we didn't really resign, but you couldn't say that. So they are like, so you resigned without a job? Sure, you know, it was so awkward. They fired you, but they wouldn't let you tell anybody they fired No, right. So it was ugly, it was awkward, it was weird. And we had people that actually came up to us like, you gotta tell the truth. Because we, we had a couple of close family friends that were attending there, and we were like, man, they're still preaching the word of God. And I, I you know, the bride, of, the bride of Christ is so much bigger than me. And we decided we would just, we would, bow, we would trust that God would take care of us. And God did amazing things when we put our faith in it. It was awkward. It was painful. But it's like this, man. God says, you know what? Don't, don't, don't. Because, I mean, really, we talked about it. There was one time, and I don't know if it's Carrie or I, we were like, we want to burn this church down. Like, literally. And I was like, no. Back up. And when we put our faith in God's hands, even though we felt like we'd been cheated, we didn't. It's probably you. Yeah, it's probably me. Yeah. I don't think it's Carrie. You gotta trust God, all right? And to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Mm. Man, that's heavy, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in these seven verses in Romans that God tells us. I, I can tell you this. Like I said, I mean, I could sit here for the rest of our time and tell you victories that God did because we submitted to God. We let God do what God does. The church, the church continued on. The church plant in, in Texas, it closed two years ago. And I, believe, and I don't know why it closed. And I, my heart breaks that it closed because we never want to celebrate. But it's probably poor leadership is what caused that. 
Um, and so I don't want to celebrate closing that church. And I have no idea why. But I'm telling you, God did amazing stuff when we trusted him. And I, like I said, and our daughters were young, and they didn't understand it. But we brought them alongside of it to see every victory that God provided in the lives of our family. And it, 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 helped, it helped them build their faith around who God is. So let me give you a couple of things. There's five principles for overcoming evil. Here's the first thing is to control your tongues. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is so big. James talks about it. We talk about this verse that the tongue can do incredible damage. And we've seen it. Some of you that have been involved in church uh, all your life, you've seen where people have destroyed the church with their tongue. Right? They've done incredible damage. That was so hard for us to keep. I had people that would go, hey, let's go to lunch. In those three weeks, we were still at their asses. And they, they sit across the table and they go, tell me what really happened. And I'd be like, I want to, but I can't. I wanted to so bad, but I couldn't. Because I was just like, you know what? You just have to trust God. You have to look and see, is this a place I want to raise my family in this church? Because there were still godly people at that church. And again, I always went back to, even though the senior minister fired me, his preaching was still right on cue. It was still based on the principles of the Bible and, and scripturally based. And they were good sermons. They, I grew a lot in those five years from this man. But for whatever reasons, this was a stumbling block for us. So you got to control your tongue. Control your tongue. Bless those who curse you, Paul tells us, right? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no <laughs> corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Is that gossip? Is gossip corrupting? Yeah. What else? What kind of corrupting talk? He's not talking about a potty mouth. I mean, which, uh, you know, this is not, well, he's not talking about cussing, so I can cuss. All right? But, I mean, what's he talking about? Well, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Anything that doesn't build up somebody up, then right. put him down. Doesn't build up people. Doesn't glorify God. Right? But only such things that is good for building up as it's fit for the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear it. Man, I don't know about you, but I fall short of that quite a bit in my weakness. Here's the next thing that we do is we see godly advisors. Identify with others and do not become isolated. All right? Resolving a conflict is hard enough on your own, but this is exactly where Satan wants you to be by yourself. And we see this in so many other examples of life, but God never intended us to do this thing by ourselves. And so I want to encourage you, if you don't have someone that you can trust. And again, I'm going to go back to you. Like when you seek advisors, one of the questions I would ask and this is a simple question is how often, how many times a week do you read the Bible? And they go, ah, just on Sunday morning. I don't know if I would choose them as a, my advisor. Alright? I would look at somebody, I, I want somebody that's in the Word. Alright? A uh, study, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago from the stage. A study was done that you really don't really start to, to retain the Word of God if you only read it twice a week, three times a week. It's four times a week that you, when you're in the Word of God, you start to retain the Word of God. All right? So if your uh, spiritual advisors all right, around you are in the Word of God only once a week, you might want to step back. Or if they're never in it and they just they come to church and they go, that's where I get the Word of God. All right? It's not enough. It's not enough just to listen to me. All right? If you really want to obey God and you really want to resolve conflicts, if you want to be a, a disciple of Christ, I hope that we're a church that will preach and preach that the Word of God is what you need to be in. Not a program, but the Word of God. All right? And here's the next one. Use the ultimate weapon. All right? Use the ultimate weapon, which is love. Jesus gave us a new command. Oh, I skipped one. Keep doing what is right. I don't have that in my notes. Oh, yeah, I do. There it is. I skipped down. Man, I really jumped ahead. All right, keep doing what is right. All right, do the right thing. We talk about this all the time, right? First Peter chapter 2. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles. Who's the Gentiles? Yeah. It's non-believers, maybe. 
It's, you know, the Gentiles, all right? Keep it as honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. All right? Keep doing what it is right. It is so tempting when you're in the middle of a conflict and somebody has done you wrong to repay them with evil, isn't it? Or just ignore them. All right? I've told you guys I have a conflict with a neighbor on one side of me, and I want to ignore this neighbor. All right? Even as simple as I'm walking out to my, uh, I, I, I'm guilty of this. I'm telling you, man, this is all for me. All right, I don't care if anybody, if nobody was in this class, these four weeks has been for God to pour onto my heart because I have a conflict with a neighbor because our dog supposedly barks too much and she wears a bark collar. I'm like, I put a camera where I can record it. And I'm like, I have proof. And the other neighbor's like, no, they're weird. Don't worry about it. All right, so I got one neighbor, dog barks too much. The other one's like, fine. I have video, our dog is sleeping instead of barking. She wears a bark collar. And so it's just driving me nuts. And so I went out to the mailbox yesterday to get the mail and, she, and this person was watering their plants in the front. And I was like, I don't know. And I pulled out my phone and I pretended to be on my phone. <laughs> That's not what God wants me to do. <laughs> uh, then I show up and teach a class or a conference. Uh, but it doesn't matter if I don't do the right thing, though. Wow. Well, right? You're, you're yeah. So, yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard. Chapter 3 of 1 Peter says this, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy. Also be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness. Do it with respect. Have a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who rival your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. So again, do the right thing. Do the right thing. And don't do it, you know, don't do, have that, well, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to be friendly because, you know, and you're doing it. What were we talking about when I came in and I confessed my sin to you? And we were talking about, you know, you do the right thing because God's in your heart. And you want to glorify God. Not because you're trying to be like, well, I'm just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to smother them with love. <laughs> but it's out of hate, you know, it's out of, so here's the next thing. Recognize your limits. Instead of retaliating, stay within the proper biblical channels. Right? Realize the limits that God, if you've chosen to take on Jesus Christ as your Savior, realize, whoops, it didn't pop up a bit. Recognize your limits. Uh, recognize that. Recognize that you're here to glorify God. And it's a it's an everyday battle. Somebody asked me, do we ever, do we ever get to the point where we just, this just comes natural? Yeah, when Jesus comes back. Other than that, it's, it's every day. Every day. Every day you seek the kingdom of God. It's not one day you're going to wake up and all of a sudden every time that you wake up, oh, but I'm seeking the kingdom of God. It's just natural. No, that doesn't happen. Not in the sinful flesh that we live in today. Every day you're going to have to determine to glorify God, to seek the kingdom of God first. And so recognize your limits. Hey, this is where God has put me because I follow Jesus. I'm, I'm not supposed to retaliate. I'm not supposed to, to avenge, you know, my hurt. All right. For me, that comes into every morning. <clears throat> Pardon me. When I have my prayer time, go to God and confess that I need him. Right. I need to die myself. Right. Help me. I ask the Spirit to help me. Remind me if I'm acting out my ego instead of acting out of my desire to please the Lord. Right. I still like that. So yeah, exactly. But, but I ask for that help because I recognize it from the get-go that that's my challenge. Right. Well, that's all of our challenge. Yeah. And this is why we're unable to resolve conflict so many times. Because we, we begin to get self-centered on us again. Yeah. And we have to be centered on Christ. And so, recognize your limits. Uh, here's the next one, and this is the one I, I use the ultimate weapon, which is uh, focus on love. You know, Christ gave us the command to love one another, and that's as disciples, but also to love those 
John 3, 16. I don't even have to, I think I have it. Do I have, yeah, I have it up on the slide, but I'm sure I don't have to have it up there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, right? And that we were pleased of him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Luke chapter 6 talks about this, but I say to you here, love your enemies. This is Jesus speaking. Do good to those who hate you. <laughs> oh, uh, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from the one who takes away your goods, do, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, so do to them also. Mighty All right. So at the very least, and here's the deal, these are the five principles of overcoming those who are um, unreasonable, right? All right? And at the very least, these steps, these five steps that we're talking about that come out of Romans chapter 12 will protect you from being consumed <laughs> by the acid of your own bitterness and resentment if others continue to oppose you. And that's really what we want, right? I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you have an unresolved conflict and the other person is being unreasonable and causing you even greater pain and that resentment and that bitterness just drives and the anxiety. I mean, it can consume you. It can make your life miserable. And in some cases, here's the deal. When you practice these five things that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 12, these five things that we just went over with, God may eventually use these actions to bring that other person to repentance. <laughs> right? Because that's the power of God. I mean, we believe in him. Why couldn't he? Why couldn't he bring that person to repentance through the stuff that we just talked about? Because you're showing them the love of Jesus. Uh, what principles have you followed before when you dealt with an unreasonable person? Has anybody followed all five of these on this kind of thing? Trying to control. Trying to control? Try to, uh, try to control the narrative? Yeah? It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> No, no. I think that when you're in the middle of a conflict and you're trying to resolve it physically, you have to surrender the outcome to God. And you have to follow the steps that are clearly outlined in Scripture of how to resolve a conflict. And then you leave it up to God. And you might see the victory and you might not. You know, one of the things I would encourage you, here's a couple of, uh, you can write these down, it's not in your notes. First Samuel chapter 24, it's, it's the story of David and his men in the cave. And Saul, King Saul, is trying to kill him. And he comes into the cave to relieve himself. You guys know the story I'm talking about? And David's men are like, hey, God's delivered him. I mean, you could kill him. And David goes, wait a minute. He's an anointed person. I'm not going to do that. And what's he do? He sneaks up behind him, and he cuts off a, a piece of his robe. And then King Saul walks out, and David comes out and holds up that. And, and there's this, there's this great interaction between Saul and David, and, and Saul realizes, oh my goodness, right? And so here, here's, a, here's an opportunity. Like I said, I mean, follow God's wisdom, follow God's word. Psalms 10 and Psalms 20, uh, 27 are another great psalms that you can look at and read as you're in the middle of a conflict of uh, dealing with an unreasonable person that might bring you peace and bring you hope, all right? As you wait and you're patient. So many things, so many times I think in the middle of a conflict, we get impatient and we try to control it with our timing. And that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to wait on his timing, on him. Put it into his hands, all right? First Peter chapter 2, verse 19 says this. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly. Did you know that was in the Bible? Ah, that's a big one. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrow, sorrows while suffering unjustly. The ultimate results for our good is in His glory. Isn't it? We might not get the outcome that we desire, but if it glorifies God, then that's all that matters. 
And that takes maturity to say that, doesn't it? Uh, one of the things I want to encourage you, as I, I said earlier, that uh, we kind of we're going to run through this real quick. Uh, here's the next step: get help from above. None of us can uh, make complete and lasting peace with others on our own strength. We must help. We must have help from God. But before we even receive that help, we need to be at peace with God Himself. And this is what we were talking about earlier, right? Peace with God doesn't come automatically because all of us have sinned and alienated ourselves from him. All right? And so when you're trying to resolve a conflict that will not be resolved, you have to step back and ask yourself, is there something between me and God that I have not resolved, that I have not taken care of? Because I, you, you want the power of the Holy Spirit. You want God's help in this. Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor is his ear dull, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities, what is that word? Iniquities. Yeah, it's sin. Yeah, I'm just like Isaiah, just say sin, man. Right. It's sin. It's, a, it's wrongdoing, all right? have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear you. You hear that? You're in the middle of a conflict, and you have sins that, that are short-circuiting your communication with God. And you're trying to resolve this conflict, and it's not resolving because you haven't went to God and confessed. Here's one of the things I really feel like. I grew up in the Christian church, the non-denominational Christian church, and I really don't believe we have taught enough of how important confession is. Not, not in the Roman Catholic sense, all right? I'm just talking about, we, you know, we've all been there before. You know, I've been there before where, you know, the, you know, the Holy Spirit's pounding on you in service, and you want to go forward and confess, but you just can't move out of that place that you're at because what would people think I'm doing? I've been there before, and I need to confess this. I need to come before God and reveal it. And sometimes when we ask for help, we need to get help from God in a conflict. We always need to get help from God in a conflict. But maybe the reason it's not resolving is because we haven't come, because we have unresolved sin in our lives, and we need to deal with that. And there's a bunch of scripture on here that I encourage you to, to, to read and to listen to you. Uh, and what God has done, even though we, what we deserve is to be condemned, an eternal con condemnation, right? To be cast out. But God said, you know what? I'm going to draw you close to me. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back through Jesus Christ and the penalty that he paid for your sins so that I can have communication with you again. So I can have a relationship with you. So I can I love you and have this, this intimate relationship with you. And so Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 tells this. I, I don't know if I have that. No, that's it. I just lost it all. So <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's so important to have once you once you resolve your, 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 your sins, your shortcomings with God. <clears throat> Here's another thing that I encourage you. The last thing that I just zipped through there and you didn't get to see is get help from the church. There's a reason why the church is here. All right? We're not perfect. By gosh, we're not perfect. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've said this often in these four weeks that we as leaders here at this church even have made a multitude of mistakes when it comes to resolving conflict. And we hope through the study of this and understanding and putting all the principles uh, all the scripture references and realizing it's biblical that we will do better as leaders in helping resolve conflict but among the church and among people. But get help from the church. Do not do it on your own. As God helps you practice his peacemaking principles, you will be able to resolve most of normal conflicts in your daily life on your own. I do believe that. Sometimes, however, you will encounter situations that you don't even, you don't know how how to begin to handle them. And so maybe the best place to go is to turn to the church and see if they can help you. And a church that loves the Word of God and loves to glorify God will come alongside of you and help you resolve those conflicts. And so one of the things I would encourage you to do is to listen to, to those people that God has placed in leadership when you have a conflict. I, I've been in conflicts before. And, and we've sat down with people, and, and our elders have said some stuff, and people get offended, and they leave. 
they leave the church. And we're like, no, just listen to what we're trying to teach you. We're not trying to, to, to guilt you. We're not trying to condemn you. We're trying to convince you to walk closer together. All right? So I want to encourage you to, to listen to the church leaders or listen to the people in your church when they come alongside of you and try to help you. All right? And when the church leaders are the ones that are and out of line, lying and the scripture and justify the yeah. and everything else. And that creates a huge panel. Yeah, that creates a conflict that is really, that's, it gets crazy. Yeah. yeah. But as long as your leaders and long the people that you are seeking advice from is yeah. standing strong in the word of God, you need to stop and go, okay, it might be hard. Yeah. Might, some of the words that they might say to you, you might, you might not want to hear that, and that might not be what you want to hear. But again, we go back to how do we glorify God? You know, uh, some of my greatest growth in my life, I'm 51. Some of the best growth have been words that were hard to hear, right? And then you step out and you look at it and you go, they were talking to me, trying to restore me, trying to be gentle, but it's tough. And uh, we want to be able to do that. So, uh, it's 10, 18. Any questions? That's it. I want you to take, here's what we want to do. We got a question? No? Here, I want you to take your peacemaker pledge. All right? We really, yeah, you got a question? Uh, it's not a question. I just wanted to say, um, <clears> through humility, if you're working with God, by his direction, if you give him a little bit of time and all to listen to him, it doesn't have to come from another person. Sometimes it's a phone call or a text. Right. And that will help uh, the, it quiet everything down. And it's amazing because when you get the call or the text, it, it comes either a day later or sometimes three days. Right. But when it does, you know it's Right. Yeah, I would yeah, just, you know, be patient and wait for God. I mean, we've talked about that. Wait on his timing. And it's amazing what God will use and who he will use. But again, I would encourage you, if you're seeking advice, make sure that that person is grounded in the word of God. Okay? Um, however you want to do that. Make sure, I mean, you know who your friends are. You know, I don't know your circle of friends, but again... I would seek that person that is truly trying to glorify God, all right? And they're going to help you see the whole magnitude of the, the conflict that you might be in. Uh, just for curiosity, for the sake of discussion, what about, uh, I think there's this thing called the precatory prayer. Mm -hmm. It's in the psalm where King David actually prays harm. On yeah. The yeah. What about something like that? <laughs> well, Jeff, I, Jeff, I wish Jeff Wurtz was down here because he's actually taught on that before. And I forget what he says, but we had a men's encounter where they talked about that too. I don't know, man. I, in my personal opinion, all right, just in my, I don't know if I'm mature enough to pray that prayer. All right, I would think that that prayer would come from a person that is deep in the humility of Christ. And if you're in that place, you can do that. Jeff, if you've been around here, man, I wish Jeff would have came down here. He was going to come down here, or was he teaching? I don't know. Anyway, he actually prayed that kind of prayer against his ex-wife. All right, and he gives reason for it, and just one of our elders, and I, I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't rebuke him. I mean, because he had a pretty good base for it, and I mean, it's actually there in Scripture. But in my personal opinion, I would never encourage somebody to do that because I don't know where you're at in your humility. All right, and if you're, <clears throat> if you're in the humility of Christ and you're trying to glorify God, I do believe that God can use a prayer like that to humble somebody to bring them back. But again. <laughs> that's beyond me. All right, in my personal opinion. Oh, that's on. Yeah. I, I just hand it to God and say, Lord, do whatever it Yeah, does. I've said that before. And now I might have a thought over here and I try to erase it real quick and get back on the guy. Right. But, yeah. Good question, though. Good question. Hey, what I would do, talk to Jeff Wartz. All right. It, but I would leave about an hour. <laughs> that thought. All right. So, hey, if you got your Peacemaker Pledge, what I would love for you to do is to date it. Today is November the 5th, 2023, and sign your name. Stick it in your Bible. 
All right, I want you to have this. I really want to see our church be a church that wants to resolve conflicts, and they want to resolve it in God's way, not their way, okay? So uh, I appreciate your guys' time. We're going to send out, through the Sunday school classes, we're going to send out a survey in a couple of weeks, get some ideas from you for the next elective that can be helpful and really we want these electees to be something that is practical that you can apply. We hope and pray that this has been beneficial for you. Um, I can tell you it has been for me, uh, just studying it and, and being able to deliver it and teach it to you. So we have an actual roadmap for you also for you to stick in your, your Bible or to stick wherever you need. And actually, this is a little card. What's sad is that everything that we talked about for four weeks is right here in this postcard. All right? So take one, and, and it will direct you on your path and your roadmap. Let me pray for us, and then we're dismissed. God, you're a good God. You're a holy God. God, I believe with all my heart and conflict that you can do some of your greatest work. As long as we remove ourselves from you that we have to win, that we trust you. And so, God, I pray that we become the disciples, the followers that you have called us to want to give you glory, to follow the principles in your holy word, and then to step back and let you do what you do best and how you restore and how you heal and you bring resolution to things. God, may we always give you the glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, man. Thanks for being here. <laughs>